Are y'all ready to get started in 2022? I'm telling you right now, baby, I'm ready to get started today. Say, neighbor, I'm ready to get started right now. After the service that we had, you may have your seats after the service that we had on last week. I don't know about y'all, but walking ain't going to get me there fast enough. I'm ready to run. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm ready to fly, Sister Tawana. I'm ready. The Bible said we shall mount up with wings as eagles. I'm ready to what? Fly in this place. Somebody say, I'm ready, Lord. So I'm ready to go where the Lord has called for us to go. Today is going to be a fascinating word that the Lord has given for this installment of Feed My Sheep. And Feed My Sheep has been blessing this house. Amen. It's been separating the sheep and the wolves. It's been pointing. Come on, somebody say amen. It's been, it's been pointing us out where we have been flawed. It's been helping us where we need the most help. It's been teaching us where we need to be taught. It's been correcting us where we need to be what? Corrected. Somebody say, help me, Lord first giving honor to the Christ, the head of our lives. God, we thank you for you being who you are, God. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for my beautiful wife, Pastor Sierra Singletary. I love you so much, honey. That's my, that's my strength, my rock right there. Amen. She was holding it down yesterday as we went to go photo shoot. I, I, for, I forgot for some time who she was because she turned into somebody totally different yesterday. She had these eyelashes, y'all. Lord Jesus, Katrina saw Thug C on last night. We got to meet all different types of Pastor Sierra yesterday. But you were beautiful, honey. You was holding it down. You hear me? You was holding it down. You should have been part of Destiny's Child, 3LW, SWV. You could have been a part of all of them on yesterday. But, all right. <laughs> but now today she's taking that part of her off. And now she is glorified in the Lord. Amen. You just had to been there. Let's get into this word of God today. Thank God. Let's praise God that you've made it today. Hallelujah. Let's get excited about life. Amen. We were asking our board on yesterday. Every year we have a, a gathering with our board members, and it was just a pleasure to be around each and every one of them. And everybody was saying, I'm thankful for life. And that's a true statement because right now life is a challenge. Everything we do, Sister Amy, right now in life is a very much of a challenge. Somebody say challenge is happening right now. But I want to start this off on Tuesday night. I, I told you all I would pick up some of the things that we were talking about on Tuesday night. And Tuesday night, man, I went back and watched and just God was just saying more stuff, more stuff. So he led me to what we're going to talk about today. And somebody look at your neighbor real good. And I, I don't want you to make your neighbor mad, but make him a little angry when you say this. Say, neighbor, neighbor. this seat is taken. Today we're going to talk about this seat is taken. On Tuesday night, Pastor Sierra, we were talking about just because it's hard, it doesn't mean that it's not God. And I think our Christian religion and our perspective on Christ is that everything is supposed to be easy. But Sister Gianni, I got to tell you the truth. Life does not become easy because you are saved. Life does not become easy because you are Christ's daughter. Life does not become easy because you decided to come to church on Sunday morning. Life does not become easy because you opened your Bible and read a scripture. No, that's not reality. But life is able because of God. Somebody say amen. So I'm able to go through because of God, but he does not make it easy for me. However, however, my strength is in God. When I get in trouble, Gianni, I don't think that I'm just going down. I say I'm going to look toward the hills from which cometh what? My help, and I know that my help cometh from the Lord. And so I don't have to worry about life being so troubling on me. I know that my help is in God. Somebody say amen. So just because it's hard, it does not mean that it's not God. Oftentimes, we give the devil credit for what really is God. Somebody say amen. And so the test that God delivers us, we end up giving all that credit to the devil. Only the devil could be doing this. Only the devil could have opened this door. Only the devil could have brought this trouble. Only the I want to let you know that the Lord God has a unique way of growing up his people. And so what, because of that, when we misinterpret, watch this, when we misinterpret who uh, what is God and place it in the devil's hands, we respond with that misinterpretation. Somebody say, how, ask, somebody ask how. Because when God lays a test on you and you make it to be the devil, you respond in anger. That was not how you were supposed to respond. When God tests you and you give that credit to the devil, then you respond prematurely. That's not how you were supposed to respond. Can I walk down your road? When God puts a test in front of you and you respond because you think it's the devil, you leave when you should have stayed. Can I walk down your road? When the devil gets the credit, you misinterpret and you respond wrongly. 
Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And so because of that, we have to identify who has laid this seat here and who has called us to sit down. Is it God or is it the devil? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. This, seat this seat is taken. So in this today, we have to first identify, fellow, that we are not giving the devil the resource and the credit that God has provided to us. And Israel, at one point in time, had become fed up with um, the ones that were leading them. Now, watch this. We are, we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let's go there now. Because at one point, Israel got so fed up with the ones that were leading them that they responded the wrong way and they got what they deserved. And so we have to be careful that we don't want things that other people have. Come on, somebody say amen. I, I need y'all to witness with me today. We're going to get out of this in 30 minutes, I promise you. We're going to get out of here, Deacon Charles, in 30 minutes. going to get another cup of Starbucks. Praise the Lord for you, Deacon. God bless you. My brother blessed me this morning. Thank you so much. I needed it. Amen. But somebody say, trouble don't last always. Yeah, that's a mini insert right there. But listen, the dangers of wanting and getting what everybody has has a hard consequence and a hard lesson to learn. When you want what everybody else has, you're going to have to endure the evil that comes along with that want. You're going to have to endure the trouble that comes along with that want. So you have to manage your life in the way that God has called you. Now watch this. At this point, we're now seeing an old Samuel. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase because I, I've preached this message to you, but I'm not preaching this to you today because we preached this in one of the series. But I just want to take an excerpt from two scriptures of this um, passage, and then you can go watch the rest later. Amen. And now watch this. He says, we're, we're seeing an old Samuel who has been a, who has appointed his two sons. So Samuel is an old man. And so he's now has put he's put Deacon Charles and Brother Derek in charge of the church. He's put Deacon Charles and Brother Derek in charge of the church. Somebody said, Lord, he's put Deacon Charles and Brother Derek in charge of the somebody said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, he's put Deacon Charles and, and Brother Derek in charge of the church. Their names were really Joel and Abia. And the other several, and other several, uh, they served as uh, Israel, over Israel as judges. Lord, help me today. Samuel's son were not like him, and they were wicked and perverted in judgment. Now, I'm not talking about Deacon Charles and uh, Brother Fellow. Pray, pray to God. They're not that way. We, we thank God for them. But we know these two gentlemen were this way. They were wrong. They were wicked. They were uh, bribe takers. They, 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 they curved the, the, the language. They curved things in their favor and they robbed the people of what was just and righteous. This is Charquia. There's people, uh, uh, remember this, there's people that are in place, but they also will take advantage of you. Come on, somebody say amen. There's people that have been appointed, but they are not anointed. There's some people that are placed in our lives and they will take advantage of your whole purse if you let them. They will take advantage of your whole house if you let I don't have a witness. They will take advantage of your whole life if you love they will take your mind they will take your decisions and they will turn that thing and please themselves and leave you hanging somebody say I know it, I know it. and so it causes so much of a problem that Israel requested a new king they did not pray sister Christina they requested for a new king they did not go and sit down and counsel with God they requested for a new king. They, they, they put all of this on God and they responded like the devil. We got to be careful that we don't respond unrighteously. Somebody say, I got to be careful. So looking at verse 4 and verse 5, we have it here on the screen. Verse 4 and verse 5 says, finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Because they are in an uproar, Deacon Charles. They are mad about how they're being treated. And instead of doing a righteous thing, which would be going to God and praying for direction, they took matters into their own hands. Can I pause right there real quick? And so we only got 20 minutes in this preach, Pastor Sierra, so I got to pause where I can pause it. So let me pause this 20 minutes that I got, and let me extend it for five minutes, Sister Tawana, and let you know that when we take matters into our own hands, that's hell on your life. That, 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 that's why the Bible tells us, let a man examine himself, because if you take matters into your own hands, when you are angry, you're going to get angry results. When you are mad, you're going to get mad results. When you are disturbed, you're going to get what? Disturbed results. When you are immature, you're going to get immature results. You can't take matters into your own hands. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I learned a lesson. I can't handle everything. Come on, I need to testify in church. I done took some matters in my own hands, Pastor Sierra, and it's hurt me. I've taken matters in my own hands, and it's cost me some things. I've taken matters in my own hands, and I've lost some people. Somebody say, I'm learning, though. 
So, so, so they, they came to discuss with Samuel the matters that was on their heart. And they told him, look. Shirley Caesar said, I got green beans, but they didn't say that. They said, look. They told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us. You got to watch what you ask for. Give us a king to judge us. Can y'all read that with me? Give, give us a king to judge us like all the other nations. Y'all see that? They wanted a king to judge them like all the other nations. That leads me to my first points. We got four points today, y'all. Watch this. First point is, even when you're pushed beyond your breaking point, seek God and nothing else. Seek God and nothing else. Israel was at their breaking point. Y'all need to write this stuff down. You're going to need it on tomorrow, I promise you. And, and, and so we realized that Israel was at their breaking point. They were fed up. Anybody ever been, Sister Christina, have you ever been fed up to the point where you didn't seek God? You took it in your own hands. Can I ask somebody to be real with me today? Sister Peaches, have you ever been so fed up that you took matters into your own hands? Deacon Charles, have you ever been so fed up that you said, bump this, bump the gospel, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it? Have you ever, or is it just me? Is there, is there anybody in here that's just been fed up to the point that your flesh kicked in and you wasn't righteous, you weren't religious, you weren't singing no hymns? You want in a worship moment. You said it's going to be this way or no way at all. So I, I, I've been fed up before. I, I, I've taken seats that I shouldn't have taken. I've taken walks that I shouldn't have walked in. I've taken conversations with people that I shouldn't have talked to. Come on, somebody testify. And so it's because when you are frustrated, you can't be faithful because you can't see past that haze of madness. And so therefore, you all messed up before you get ready to praise. You messed up before you get ready to dance. You messed up before you get ready to minister. You messed up. That's why we open the altar up at 10 o'clock. There's no rules. You just lay out and get Give it to God. And so if Israel would have did this, they wouldn't have mishandled the matter that they already was mishandled in the first place. You can't, you can't be mishandled and go mishandle it again. Come on, you can't be mishandled and then go do a thing and mishandle the situation. If, if they hit you in, in, in the traffic, if they run into your car, you don't go run into them. Let me put it like this, Chris. Let me put it like this. The old school would tell it's like this. Two wrongs. Don't, I see y'all grew up in the same household. Two wrongs don't make a right. Now, that, that, ain't, that ain't gospel, but it's right. So Israel was sick of mistreatment and mishandled matters. They were even asking for better judgment. Watch this. With the wrong judgment for themselves. They thought they were asking for a good thing, but they really did not realize they were in the wrong judgment. They judged that other nations had it better. But can I take another uh, uh, a cliche and help y'all repeat this with me? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, the grass ain't always greener. On the other side, I see we grew up in the same neighborhood. Welcome to church, all to worship. I see we in the same. See, the grass, Deacon Charles, is not always greener on the other side. And, and, and if you think about this, let me, let me pause real quick. Well, my, my school students at Gianni and Najai, and, and let me talk to y'all real quick. See, science will tell me that when the sun shines a certain way, that the colors of the blades of the grass perspectively look a little bit greener. But if you are standing in the wrong place, appearing and looking at that thing, you will think it's greener and you will settle for that. And when you get there, you find out it's dead. Do I have a witness in here today to say I've looked at things and thought they were well and I got to what it was and found out it was dead? Ezekiel even asked God, Lord, can these dry bones live? So. I, I, I want to tell you tonight, today, excuse me, I want to tell you today that Israel was a people who didn't know what was good for them. They didn't know what was good for them. That's like somebody asking for good customer service and being a bad customer. How, how are you going to tear up the restaurant and say they got bad customer service? Come on, Amy, you feel me? How, 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 I know, I know they did it at Moe's, I understand. How, how did they, how do you ask for good customer service and you acting in, up in here like a tyrant? You a whole fool. And, and, and it grinds my gears, as Deacon Charles would say, when somebody is acting up and demanding the manager. You, you, that, those two things don't go together. 
And so Israel had a very right reason to feel the way they feel, felt. You, you, they were justified in feeling mistreated, and they wanted change and guidance. But they did it the wrong way. But the mistake is, when we are fed up, we go and feed on what looks good on others. We, 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 we see other people looking good in what they got. And so we have to be careful, Pastor Sierra, that we don't go and do the thing that we think is good for the Joneses because that may not be good for the Singletaries. I don't have a witness. That may not be good for the Spurgeon. That may not be good, hallelujah, for the Richardsons. That may not be good for the Taylors. If, if I go do everything and keeping up with the Kardashians and the Joneses, I'm going to be a mess. So, so Israel did not have, I'm trying to drive this so we can get to our next point, because Israel did not have a conversation with God. They had a conversation with them in themselves. And y'all already know when you start talking within them yourself, that's when them demons start talking back. You think, oh, I know you thought it was God, but that was a devil. Oh, you, you don't, don't call them. Don't say nothing. That's the devil. God says, let us reason together. God says, go to your brother when you have an alt with him. The devil tell you, to cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. And I like what Mike Tyson said because Mike Tyson told that young football player, he said, if you do that, the devil wins every time. He said, what? If somebody mistreat me and I cut them off, the devil win? He said, yes, because they're now your master. They changed you. So Israel is serving a thing that changed it from God. And so God said, if you're going to go with that, go ahead. Because if you continue to read, I'm not doing the whole scripture today. Because if you continue to read, you'll find out when Samuel came to those people and said, this is what's going to happen. He gave them sound warning. But he went to God and said, God, they want to leave you for another king. They want another king. What do I tell them? God said, let them go. The same God that loved the world, he said, what? Let him go. The same God that died on the cross, he said, what? Let him go. And so God is not going to put up with your foolishness. That one in the notes, Pastor Sierra. We have to be careful as sheep and as leaders that we don't chase after the thing because God is blessing someone in that space. But watch this, all while vacating the seat that he has for us. Let's move to point number two. Write this down. Do not leave your seat to sit in an occupied seat. Do not leave your seat to sit in an occupied seat. Occupy is when something is being used by someone it's, uh, or something is busy or actively engaged, and it also means to dwell. Occupy is something that is being used by someone. Let's just stop right there. Oftentimes, we want to sit in seats that people are already sitting in, and even if they get up, that's still their seat. Ever notice at overcrowded places like bus stops and uh, restaurants and airport terminals, you ever notice that when s- that seats are hard to come by when the place is full to capacity? Every, every, anybody ever went to the airport when it was just just busy and you sitting there with all your luggage and your bag and your feet hurt and you tired of walking, you done went through TSA, they done tried you with this random check-in, you think it's because you were black, you think it's because you was a woman, you think it's because you were, I mean, we all have all this stuff that we start thinking. And so by the time you get ready to get to a place where you can finally sit down, Pastor Sierra, and I know she be feeling it because sometimes when we travel, I be looking at all these seats. And I'm like, y'all, now y'all holding up a seat with your bag. You holding up a seat with your kid. You holding up a seat with your animal. Get that seat up. But what I had to realize were seats that appear to be open are most likely occupied. There's some seats that appear You got to watch that, Pastor C, or that appear word. There's some seats that appear to be open, but they really are occupied. I'm going to bless you at the end of this. If someone steps away, another is holding their place. That seat is occupied. You're looking at an open seat, but even that seat belongs to a child running up and down the row, and that seat also what is occupied. So then you are even more tempted because there is a specialized seating. Pastor Sierra, we, we, we learn of this when we drive in parking lots and because we have a handicap st- tag in our car. And I be trying to avoid from this, Pastor Sierra. I, I do. She done told my testimony all Friday night. I'm going to tell you up now. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, she at that women's conference, woman of God. You was tearing it up. Oh, but it's Sunday morning now. Welcome to church. So I be, I, I be trying to avoid 
the handicap spot unless we just got to take it, right? Because my mom has a disability, and, and we have the handicap tag in our car for that very reason. But it's really when she's with us and her mom is with us or whoever, and we don't want them to walk far. But when it's just me and her, and it's a couple's parking spot, she looks at me crazy for doing the right thing, taking the right, sp the, the regular spot. Babe, why we got to park way down here? We just passed the handicap, and I'm going to have to remind her, we are not handicapped. <laughs> we are able-bodied, young, beautiful people. <laughs> you want me to drive? And then, let me tell you what she do, Sister Amy. When we get, oh, yes, Lord, we're going to tear this up today. When we get up there to the handicap spot, oh, vet, let me tell you what she do. <laughs> All right, honey, I'm going to act like something wrong with me. Girl, there's nothing wrong with you. Just walk. Maybe if I just walk like I'm, I'm pregnant. Honey, there is nothing wrong with you. <laughs> and and, and let, me, let me bring this back to this preach real quick, Pastor Sierra, because you ain't the only one. Because, but hey, look, you got, you got, look, we, we got cousins in here. I'm telling you. Y'all something else. But you ain't the only one because here's, the, here's why. We are trying to behave like a thing just so we can get through that thing, right? And, and so in order for me to sit in that handicapped spot, I got to behave, what? Handicapped. But I'm strong. I'm young. And I, now I got to conform to something that's hurting and that's weak and that's older. And I'm not there. Somebody say, I'm not there. I'm not there. So you have to be careful with this kind because you'll conform to the predestination of handicap and you're not even there. Y'all gonna have to catch that one on your way out of 22nd. You you will conform to being a bad chick on on Instagram, and that's not even who you are. You will conform to being a uh, a uh, uh, oh my God today. Ooh, I'm trying to be careful. You will conform to the world standards, and that's not who you are. You are a woman of God. You are a man of valor. You are somebody that is chosen by God. You don't have no need to conform to this seat that is already destinated for handicapped people, for broken people, for hurting people, for sick people, for mentally ill people, for people that are on their last leg. That's not who you are. You're not on your last leg. You're not hurting. You have a shepherd you shall not want. You are not on welfare. You are a child of God. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. So, so we conform to the system so the system can have favor on us. But I don't want the system. I want the kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so even though... It's expedient for us to take that spot. We don't always, what, have to. So you got to be careful that you don't take advantage of things that are available and then start conforming and making everybody think you handicapped and pregnant, Pastor Sierra. Well, that ain't who we are. That ain't who we are. Then she talking about, baby, just walk like you got a crook in your neck. I will not. No. I'm good. And, and so I have to tell her, but honey, if somebody say something to us, we have, it's for my mother. Then she's like, yo, we'll tell them that she in the store. Honey, we're not going to tell them she in the store. I'm sorry, Pastor Sierra. I just had to. Amen. But you, you, it was so cute on Friday night when I was nervous um, about approaching you, but now you don't want to talk about your handicap sticker. Okay. All right. So now what is more is that your feet are hurting. Um, Mother Delisha, she, she understands what, it's, what it is to be standing for a while, and her feet begins to hurt. She's tired, she's uncomfortable, and, she's making, and, and the advantage is not in her favor. And so she want to sit down like everybody else. You're starting to weigh in if this is fair or not. Come on, somebody say amen. You're, trying to, you're looking at everybody else, and you're like, is this even fair? Sister Sharquia, is this even right that they won't give up my seat and I'm a woman? Is this even right that all these kids got seats and that's a baby? They can hold that baby. I know you said it. Come on, somebody say amen. They need to put you, you, and on the reverse side, they need to put that baby down. When they put the baby down, they got your seat. So which one do you want? <laughs> and, and, and so you can't have them both. Somebody say you can't have them both. You're wondering if someone will make room for you. You're starting to wonder if anybody cares about you enough to even invite you to sit over here. And so, but all the while, Sister Tawana, all the while, all the, uh, 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 there are good people that will, but not everything that looks good for you is good for you. 
that good neighbor might say, come have this seat. But the Lord said, wait, I have a seat for you. Don't take that one. And, and, and so we have to hear the voice of God. The Lord said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not hear. So you have to know the voice of God when he says, don't go. Even if it look good, Sister Christina, don't go. Even if it smell right, don't go. Even if it was presentation was good, don't go. There's some, there's some seats that I don't sit in because God said that's not for you. And, and, and those my friends are sitting next to those seats. Those are my brothers sitting next to those seats. Those are my sisters sitting next to those seats. Those are people that I trust sitting next to those seats. But when God says that is not for you, somebody say don't go. But all the while, there are good people that will invite you over. But you got to be careful because that's a convenience. And convenience is only effective when it makes it easy for you. But nephew, I got to tell you the truth, that just because it's convenient doesn't mean it's always God. Oh, I know my Lord doesn't make everything easy for us because there's some challenges that we have to be able to persevere through. And we have to be able to stand in the will of God and don't take the easy way out. Oh, I hear you, David. David wished he could have took the easy way out. He tried. He took that man's wife, had a baby with her, and tried to kill him. Then he killed the man and thought he was going to get away with it until a prophet came and told him what you did was wrong. Then he had to grieve for like a week. He was hurting. Everything stopped because this man made a mistake. He did the wrong thing. He let lust lead him because lust is convenient. Love is difficult. Lust is convenient. What? Yes, love is difficult. Why? Because you have to journey through love. You have to trust through love. You have to give over for love. But lust, momentarily, you could have that in one night and be over with it. I don't, I don't have a witness today, Pastor Sierra. I, 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 because Israel, what were they looking at? They were looking at another nation through what? Lust. That's why they wanted the easy way out. That's why they asked for another king. That's why they were so foolish being God's chosen people asking for another king. Okay, so, so it takes a wise person to look through convenience, Pastor Sierra, and see that there is a blessing in my trouble. Oh, I got to stop right here. Watch this. There is a blessing in my trouble. There's a blessing in my pain. There's a blessing in my serving. There's a blessing in this hour. There's a blessing in this prayer. There's a blessing in this laboring. There's a blessing in my coming. There's a blessing in my going. There's a blessing in my sitting still and being patient. There's a blessing where I am. There's a blessing where I came from. And so I'm not going to take the easy way out and lose out on my I'm not going to take the easy way out and lose out on my blessing because if I had now I'm going to decorate my wife real quickly because I tore her down with a handicap sticker but let me build her up watch this and so if I had taken the easy way out sister Amy I would not have a wife called Sierra Singletary if I would have taken the easy way out my wife could have been anybody out there that I saw momentarily if I was not aligned with God if I did not take the seat where he took, told me to sit I would not have this woman and so therefore I journeyed through love I journeyed through her story and was all her story cute no her some of her story was ugly some of her story was bittersweet but I learned to be patient and journey so I can get what God has called for me because oftentimes if you're not careful you'll see what they want and you'll begin to want what they want and I had to be careful that I heard other men, brothers of the faith, ministers of the faith, saying what they wanted in their wives. And I had to be careful to reverse my mind, to remember everything God told me before I heard that man open his mouth, that before I opened up Instagram, before, oh, I don't have a witness, before I opened up Facebook, before I put these things on a list, I said, bump the list, God, show me what you have for me. And so, and so instead of having a conversation with men I had a conversation with God and he told me in the year I would see her and know who she was he told me in the year that she would have the ring and be my wife he told me everything that I needed to know why because I had a conversation with God and not with Tawana not with Deacon Charles and not with Sister A I had a conversation with the spirit of all truth not the flesh of this earth come on somebody say amen there's some conversations that you having with rocks that are humans that you need to be having with the spirit of God 
Oh, Jesus, you're working right now. I'm trying to get out of it. But listen, there is a blessing in my persecution. There is a blessing in my heartache. There's a blessing in my pain. There's a blessing in my suffering. There's a blessing, Sister Sharice, in your sacrifice. And you have given all that you can give, and you feel like you ain't got nothing else to give. But I want to let you know there is a reserve tank in your faith that God is about to let you tap into. Who am I talking to today? There is a reserve area of my faith that God is about to let me stand in. There's a reserve area in my faith. I haven't seen everything. The Bible says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered in the heart of man. What good and wonderful things God is about to release in your life. Somebody say be patient. There, there is a blessing, although I can't see it fully now. I know that even the seat that I'm in, that, oh, excuse me. I know that even the seat that is in the midst of my blessing is occupied. Listen, watch this. I know that the seat that is in the midst of my blessing is occupied, even though I haven't taken my seat yet. What are you saying, Pastor Corey? It means that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, what, no evil, but I'm walking through this valley, and there's evil around me, but I will not fear. Come on, somebody say amen. I will not fear, because why? His rod and his staff, it comforts me, it protects me, it keeps me up, it keeps me going, it don't keep me worrying, it keeps me faithful, it keeps me committed, so I'm going to walk through this valley till I make it to this table and I know at this table I'm going to sit there. I'm going to have my seat and all my enemies going to see me eating good. All my enemies going to see me walking well. All my enemies going to see me living up. All my enemies going to see me still standing. I say everything that I have breath going to see and praise the Lord. Why? Because I made it. Come on, somebody say amen. So there, there's some people that's going to praise God just because you made it. There's some people that's going to live to see tomorrow just because you made it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know it's hard, but don't quit. So, so in the midst of my blessing, I know that my seat is there and it's occupied. That's my seat. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this seat is taken. Galatians 6 and 9, daughter, let's go there. It's Galatians 6 and 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At the, at the just right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Do not get weary because you're doing well. Sister Sharice, do not be get, don't get weary, Sister Katrina, because you're doing well. You got you to gotta continue to go on. Don't give up even though it's hard. Don't think it's the devil because it's hard. Don't think it's the enemy because it's tough. Don't think it's your people because you can't. Ma- Come on, somebody say amen. amen. So, so, so watch this. Watch this, Pastor Sierra. Hallelujah. God, help us. We, only, we got two more points. I got to get through this, la- this third one here. Watch this. Because of everything I just said, point number three, patience is a virtue. Now, Pastor Sierra talked about a pr- virtuous woman on Friday night. If you went, somebody understands that a virtuous woman is a good thing. Virtue is good. Virtue is good. Somebody say it is good. Now, also in that message, he gave us the implication of the woman with the issue of blood, how she had to fight through. Come on, somebody. How she had to fight through the people. For 12 years, she had dealt with this issue of bleeding. She dealt with this issue of being casted out. She could not go out in public because that was the mandatory rules. When a woman was on her cycle, she could not be outside. She could not sleep with her man. She couldn't even be in the same bed as him. So imagine for 12 years this woman not being counted into society, but still being there. Oh, Jesus. So, so, so she, she was there, but she wasn't there. They tried to help her, but they couldn't help. They tried to talk to her, but they had no advice. They had nothing for my trouble. The only one that has what I need is God. Somebody say amen. And so understanding this, that this woman, Pastor Sierra, fought through. She was patient for 12 years. And that the point that her patience grew thin, she tapped into that reserve area. I told you God is going to let you tap into. And she stretched forth her hand and she touched the hem of his garment, meaning the bottom of his coat, meaning the bottom of his attire. She touched the very least of it. Ah, oh, let me pause real quick, Pastor Sierra. Sister Tuana, I know I had 20. I think I got seven left. Let me put a pause right here. Watch this. If you could touch the very little bit of Jesus and be made whole, I would serve him. Oh, my God. Oh, 
The devil uses all that he got to get you to serve him a little bit. And God can bless your whole life with just the littlest part. And, and, and so it, it lets me know that you have to be patient because there are pay- people who are too impatient to see a thing fully through. This woman could have committed suicide after the year 11, but she made it to the year 12. Somebody say, I made it to this year, so I might as well reach. So, so there's some people that won't see it fully through, Sister Katrina, because they'll disregard all the warning signs to rush to the end result. Isn't that the same? Isn't that some of us, right? Right? Isn't that some of us? We'll let the cooks get by with cooking our food only a little bit, right? And, and, and we'll let them get a pass, right? Because it's, it was, it was, I'm hungry. I need to eat right now. But I need to let you know about that right now spirit. You're going to have to learn how to tame that thing and learn how to wait. That's why we fast. That's why we pray so we can bring our body on the subject of ourselves, under the spirit, and not under our flesh. Because everything your flesh wants, it don't need Come on, rebuke that spirit. I need a drink. No, you don't. Rebuke that spirit. I need to smoke. No, you don't. Rebuke that spirit. I need to go out. No, you don't. Rebuke that spirit. There are a lot of people that won't rebuke that spirit. They'll they'll fall under subject to it. They'll feel like that's what I need. They'll feel like that's what I got to have. But I need to tell you, it takes a very patient person and a very virtuous person because virtue is a good thing. That means good left out of Jesus when that woman touched him. Good left out of, come on somebody, good left out of Jesus when that woman touched him. He said, who touched me? I felt virtue leave my body. I, I, I felt the good thing go out. Who was it? They like, Jesus, all these people touching you. Everybody reaching out, but you, you identify with this one. Yeah, because this one was a different type of touch. Come on, somebody say, I got to touch him differently. That, that, that in this season, all to worship, let me prophesy to you prophetically. In this season, God is going to have a different reach from this house. This house is going to reach differently than the house you've been to. It's going to reach differently than the houses you grew up in. It's going to reach differently than what you've ever seen and experienced. So I need you to get your mind ready for a different reach. I don't need you to reach for tradition. I don't need you to reach for what you grew up in. I need you to reach for what he called us to right now. Come on, somebody say reach. There there are a lot at stake when you become impatient and don't see it all the way through. See, when you become impatient, you might lose your whole life. When you become impatient, you might lose your entire career. When you become impatient, you might lose your whole marriage. When you come, uh, come on, somebody say, when you become impatient and you don't see it through, you might miss something that you need. Israel learned this the hard way when Samuel shared with them everything they would lose and be subject to under this new king. And now I'm going to say with you a few of these, but it's not all of them, just a few. They would be forced into unpaid labor. That's slavery. Their daughters would be taken um, by force to cook, bake, and make perfumes. Their best cattle, the ones that earned them the most money, would be taken away from them and given to the high-ranking officials that will have rule over them. Watch this. And then their property would be given away, not sold. You won't make a money off this real estate sister Katrina you will lose that house and it will be given away to those officials and then they're going to raise their taxes and take their monies so if you're going to raise the taxes on me and take so I'm paying the higher price and you're also taking what I have this is what Israel was warned that they would be um, subject to do you realize that Israel heard all of that and still chose the new king They heard every warning. God even warned them that they would cry to him and God would not help them because they chose this king. God is not mocked. Therefore, you cannot sample God. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Oftentimes, vet, when I was young, I would just run to the mall when I was Chris age just to get samples because I was hungry and I knew I can get samples for free. I didn't have to buy the meal as long as I can get that sample. I, I, I didn't have to pay for nothing as what? As long as I can get that sample. But I want to let you know something. You can't just sample God. If you're going to have a little bit of God, you're going to have all of God. Come on, somebody say amen. That woman was not reaching and sampling. She was reaching for her whole life. Come on, somebody say amen. And so I understand that I can't just have a little bit of God and go back to all the things that I like. You got to have God all or God nothing. Come on, somebody say amen. And so we, we, that's the society that we're in right now. Oh, my God. I told you guys on something. I got to document it. I have to. I got to put it together. If, if you remember, I don't know why the Lord made me stop to say this to you all, but if you remember on a Tuesday night Bible study, I told you all, if you remember, 
I told you all that they were going to make it okay for pedophiles to be included into society. You remember that? I said that, that they were going to make it okay. They are now calling pedophiles, the, 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 the attraction to minors and the, the idea of being with them, they're calling it a uh, minor attraction. So now when you hear those two words together, it's going to sound soft and sweet because they're trying to ease it in under your nose. And if we don't stand and take guard, we'll accept everything. I'm telling you, if we choose this new world and this new order and this new society, this is what we're going to lose. Our children, our dignity, our integrity, and we got to stand on the word of God. Look it up. The LGBT community is, are, are going to grab that letter, pedosexual, and they're going to include it into their alphabet. And we're going to be like, it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It's, there's something wrong with us if we think that is okay. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Lord. I know why you sent me there because we're getting ready to go to point number four, and we're closing after that. It, it, it works out in our favor when we are willing to go through with God rather than give in to do what everyone else is doing. The problem with you is that what you're, uh, the problem is that with you, you will have to lower your standard and dim your light to fit in with society. You, you, you'll have to lower your standard, dim your light to make them happy. You'll have to lower your standard, dim your light to make them feel good. You'll have to lower your standard, dim your light to make people accept you in. You'll have to lower your standard, dim your light to get a seat at the table. You'll have to lower your standard. and dim. See, everything in this world is going to cause us to come down from holiness. huh? Everything in this world is going to cause us to come down from righteousness. Everything in this world is going to cause us not to take a stand. But somebody say, I will not, I will not lower, my standard. lower my standard. And, and that takes me to point number four, daughter. Let's go there. Do not lower your godly standards to sit anywhere with the world. Don't, don't you lower your standards to sit somewhere. I want to let you know real quick, here's my ear to the streets, Peaches. I know you was waiting on it. Here it is right here. TLC sang a song called Waterfalls, and in that she said, don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. I know you're going to have it your way or nothing at all. He, she says at the end here, but I think you're moving too fast. Can you look at your neighbor and be honest with him? Say, neighbor, I think you're moving too fast. Oh, y'all look at somebody else because they're going to get mad at the preacher, but let them get mad at you today. Say, neighbor, I think you're moving too fast. Let's go to Matthew 5. We're going to close here in a minute. Matthew 5. Matthew 5 and 6. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. Let me pause right here, Sister Tawana. I know I got three. Let me put a pause right here and, and, and give me like two minutes right here to work this out right here. Because here's the thing. The Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. The problem is we are filled up on so much garbage that we don't even recognize righteousness. We are filled up on so much junk that we don't right recognize a good thing. We are filled up with so much junk that we don't recognize the gospel, Sister Shaquille. We are filled up with so much gas from this world. Our heads are big. Our pride is high. Everything is pride, pride, pride week, pride month, pride year, pride decade. Everything is pride and there is no humility in the kingdom. There is no humility in the church. And so we are filled up with everything that is not God. We're filled up, Pastor Sierra, but we're not filled up with righteousness. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We're not hungry and thirsty for righteousness. We're hungry and thirsty for bad chicks and, 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 and bad boys and thugs and, 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 and uh, 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 I don't know, all this stuff, whatever stuff. We, we are hungry for stuff that are temporarily and no good to us. We, we, we're looking for a good night, not a good life. We're, we're, we're looking for a good day, not a good, not a good life. We're looking for, for, we're looking for stuff that are not attainable in the kingdom. You got to be careful because you can be hungry, but you can be impatient and take what they give you and not evaluate if it's good for you or not. I said earlier, we give these cooks some pass, but my wife, oh my God, you bring her food out wrong, you're going to have to send it back, and the chef's going to have to come talk, and the manager's going to have to talk, give me the GM, give me, all, give me the owner, bring them all out here, baby, because I can't eat this. Not like that. No, ma'am, no, sir. you got to take that back. My mother, she don't eat no pink. If it got pink, she won't eat it. I'm telling you, there are some people that will not lower their standard for your mess. Let me tell y'all about Aetna. 
Etna, my mother, Etna, listen, if that tea ain't sweet, you can't bring it calling sweet tea. Just call it unsweet tea if it ain't sweet. If you try and it's not sweet, call it unsweet so she don't have to deal with it. I'll just go order a Coke. That, that, that way I don't even have to tempt my taste buds. I, I don't even have to fool with y'all today because you said it was sweet and you came. And when I taste it, it's nasty. That's what Etna would do. Etna would say, I'm not going to have this foolishness you call sweet. So, so don't tell me it's righteous and then you give me evil. Don't tell me it's good and you give me bad. Don't tell me you're going to be committed and you fluke out on me. Don't tell me you ready and you back out when it's time to serve. See, I, somebody said, I can't lower my standards. So, so Fed, if you're going to tell me you ready, I need you to be ready when we call. If you say you're going to be there, I need you to be there when we go. Uh, if you're going to tell me you're going to ride with me, I need you to ride with me if you're going to ride. If you say you my ride or die, you can't be fearing death because we're going a little fast. Come on. If you're going to ride or die, Pastor, you can't be fearful what they do. You got to trust in the will of the Lord. And so this is why, because the world will cause you to evacuate the seat that you're supposed to sit in. And as you're on your way, when things get rough, that's the devil. When things get rough, we shouldn't go because God given us a sign. God has given you a sign to go through this storm and not to be a coward and not go through it. He told his disciples, Sister Amy, he said to his disciples, how is it that you have no faith? You have no faith. There is a storm and you have no faith. There is a problem and you have no faith. They got on your nerves and you have no faith. They didn't show up and you have no faith. How is it that you have no faith? Figure it out. You are a wise person. You got a degree. You've been to school. You got children. You've been parenting. You a wife. You a husband. You a manager. Figure it out. What, 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 what is the point of all these skills that we have when it comes to the kingdom? We can't use them. God, how are how we going to do this today? We're going to do it because you're here. Thank you, Pastor. Figure it out. Who's going to turn this on? We're going to do this because you are here. Figure it out. God ain't looking for people to see the problem and don't want to solve the problem. Come on, somebody say, I'm a problem solver. Now, now, Sister Charcoal, you can't be only a problem solver when it's gossip. When it's, when it's fun to talk about somebody else's stuff, it, you can't be a problem solver to solve everybody else's stuff and still can't see yours. The bi Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. I'm still in my pause, Sister Tawana. Can you give me my, can you hold on to my three minutes? Now, watch this. And so there, the Bible tells us you are worrying about the speck in your brother's eye, but you got this whole log sticking out your eye that you don't even want to deal with. Don't, don't tell me about the spot on my shirt when you ain't got a shirt on at all. How you going to tell me about something? How you going to tell me how to, you don't even got a car. That, that was Etna right there. My mama, she know everything about this, and she want to tell me what, I'm, mama, I'm, you don't even drive. You just sit right here. Let me, I got this. Relax. She want a backseat drive. And then I think her and my, my, my wife had some conversations prior to us getting married, because now my wife want a side car passenger drive with me. I'm a lady, sit back. I got this. <laughs> sit back. But it's, it's beautiful because there are people that want to respond, they want to see the things go through, they're trying to help you figure it out, make this turn, make that turn, go this way, sit here, go there, but I want to let you know that you're going to have to bring on the mindset of God that when you see a thing that you'll be able to identify that this needs you and nothing else. Somebody said this seat is occupied. See, the thing about the seat being occupied is we have to know it is our seat. You have to know this is your seat. See, I, I don't, I'm not going to try to seat in the, sit in the seat. Oh, I got to do this real quick. Uh, nephew, bring me a seat up here. Come on, bring me a chair. Get that one right there and bring it up here. Yep, that one right there. Bring it up here. We're going to close. Listen, we have to ad identify how to sit in seats properly or we'll sit in them improperly. And then we'll, we'll also put it right there for me. We'll also, we'll also deal with the seat in the wrong way. We'll deal with the seat in the wrong way. Watch this. I'm going to share this with you. There are men and women that are trying to sit in the seat with the wrong identity. And, and, 
and that's working in the favor of the devil. Watch this. There, there are, there are certain ways. I'm gonna get in trouble for this, Pastor Sierra. But there are certain ways that a man sits in a seat, and there's certain ways that a woman sits in a seat, and there's certain ways that we behave when we sit in a seat as a woman or as a man. There are certain ways that we get out of the seat as a as a man, as a woman, as a uh, husband, as a wife, whatever you are. There's certain ways there, that you sit in a seat. Uh, there are certain things that I do when I sit in the seat because I have to remember also I'm a pastor, not just a man. There's certain things you have to remember because you're a husband and not just a man. As a wife and not just a man. Come on, somebody, amen. There's a mother and not just a woman. There, 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 there's certain things you have to do, excuse me, as a, uh, uh, a wife and not a man. You know, y'all know what I was trying to say. Thank you. There's certain behaviors that you have to take on that are right by God when you take your seat. So, just because my wife was Thug C, she don't sit in seats today as Thug C. Just because you came from West Tampa don't mean you got to sit in that seat for all of West Tampa. You know, you know why, we're le why we're losing so many of our young people today is because they're trying to sit for the whole hood. Ain't nobody asked you to sit for me. <laughs> Somebody said I can take my own seat. So there are certain people, Deacon Charles, that want to sit in the seat for everybody. Baby, I got my own seat, and I'm good with my seat. I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to sit in the seat of a lawyer. I, my wife aspires to be a lawyer. I don't want to be a lawyer. So woman of God, go and let the Lord use you. That ain't my area. Because there's some areas that we want to sit in that are not called for us. Come on, let's be honest. A lot of us want to sit in the seat for millions, but we're not there yet. Come on, let's have an honest, let's have, so sit in your seat with five figures for a little while until the Lord elevates you to six. And when he elevates you to six, sit there, six, sit there for a little while until he gets you to seven. And when he gets you to seven, sit there for a while so he can take you up to eight and keep going and keep going. But you know what we do? We waste our five trying to get the six and lose our five trying to get the seven. Y'all didn't catch that. We lose our five trying to get the six all while losing our five trying to get the seven. I'm, I, I, I don't know why the Lord randomly threw out this week. I was walking through my job and I was like, why do people always try to rob Peter to pay Paul? Stop robbing both of them. The Bible says give Caesar what's his. Give God what is his. We sit here trying to rob Peter to pay Paul. Why is robbing in our mind? Why is killing? Because we're sitting in seats that don't belong to us. If I sit in the seat of somebody that is violent, I'm going to become a violent person. Because that wasn't my seat. You got to be careful that you don't sit in the company of people and become like them. I'm, I'm okay with being a church boy. If that's what you're going to call me, I'm okay because my life is good as a what? Church boy. <laughs> call me that if you want to. I won't be in jail. Not this church boy. Huh? I won't have. Come on, somebody say man. You're going to have me in the papers. Not Pastor Sierra. She wouldn't stand for that. Wouldn't even be her husband at all. So because she said it on Friday night, I had to make sure this man had a relationship with God. I ain't gonna let him sit in the seat of husbandry with me if he has no relationship with God. I need him, I need to trust that he can speak to God and hear God when God speaks to him and so he can lead us where God is taking him. It's the same goes for women. I need to trust that she can hear God so when she comes to me, we come to me with something I know is godly and it's just not her being a woman and out of order and not in her feelings. She has sought, sought after the Lord. Amen. Men have to learn how to do the same thing. Get out your pride. Get out your ego. Come on. Get, come, come on, somebody. Say amen. That young man up in Memphis, I'm about to close. That young man up in Memphis should not, hold my three minutes, Sister Tawana. Hold on to me. That young man up in Memphis should not have lost his life, especially when he was trying to help out the hood that killed him. Young Dolph, the rapper. They killed him in, in his own hood. That makes no sense. Why? Because people are sitting in seats trying to behave like thugs and criminals, and they really are good people with a bad intention. So when you sit in your seat, sit in your seat with the right intentions of the Lord. The seat is taken. The seat is what? Taken. 
who question you sitting, be okay with being a righteous woman. Be okay with being 13. Amen. We got our 13 year olds, they're trying to be 21. Come on. We got our, our 21 year olds trying to be 13. We got our 45 year olds trying to mix with 15. And, and we're, we're looking at it and seeing it, and we're like, oh, it's okay. That's not okay. It's not okay. We have to sit in the seats that we have been called to. If you know you've been sitting in a seat that is not yours anymore, get out that seat and go sit in the one that God has called you to. Amen. How can God feed you if you're out of place? God, God is feeding us. And he's got the table laid out. It's made and it's ready, but we're not at the dinner table. You want God to serve you at the bar? He's not going to do it. Amen. Somebody say amen. We want God to feed us on our terms. He's not going to do it. You either get where you're supposed to be or you get nothing at all. Amen. It's a hard gospel, but Jesus was where he was supposed to be to fulfill God's word. He, he did not fulfill Calvary and Gethsemane. He did not fulfill Calvary in Bethlehem. I'm not going to fulfill the word of God. If God is calling me outside of Tampa, I got to get there when I got to get there. But I'm not going to rush to the end. But I know he's calling me somewhere else. But I'm not going to rush to the end. God has called me to be a wife. Well, don't take up the next man just because he said so. <laughs> don't, say, don't, 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 don't say yes just because somebody came and said hi. Let me move this seat because y'all, y'all going to get mad. Pastor Sierra didn't just, just she didn't just say hi and, and just say hello and then end up with her husband. No, she, she took some time. We was at the altar praying. I would say, honey, let's pray. She would say, honey, let's pray. We would say, let's pray together. Why? Because we were on the same mind. We wanted to do the same things. A lot of us are trying to do the same thing with people that want to do things differently catch that on your way home. You, you, you're trying to do keep this standard and keep it the same, but that person is not quite there. Let them have their seat where they are. Woman of God, sit in your seat. Stop rushing. You try to get... <laughs> oh, please sit down. If he sit in this seat like you said, it's not going to be him. She's not going to be her. This church won't be this church if we try to be a uh, potter house and uh, it's a phenomenal church, Grace Family and the City Life and all. Those are great ministries, but that's not who this ministry is. This ministry is great at what it is and who it is and who it's for. It's great for me. It's great for you. You were called here for a purpose. If God wants you to occupy another seat, he will let you know. But let me let you know something. God, I had to tell my brother this this morning. There are some relationships that we can have separation and it be peaceful. Then there's some relationships that will be torn apart, meaning on both ends it's going to be jagged, it's going to hurt you, it's going to hurt them. God don't just rip people out of churches and seats. That's not how God do it. The devil will. So when you leave and when you make a move, make sure you make your move godly. Amen. Let me show you something. Come here, Amy. Bring your chair. Come sit next to me. I'm going to show you how this works. This is how this works, Amy. Come sit next to me. Now, all I want you to do is so simple. This is all I want you to do. Just get up and go take a seat. Right. You see how peaceful that was? But there are some people that will get up and leave like this. Get on my nerves. Now look what happened. You done left a mess. You done caused a commotion. You've caused a distraction. Guess what? You know what we learned from that? You were sitting in the wrong seat. <laughs> you realize how long this person sat in this seat, Amy? Three years. Been sitting in the wrong seat. Two months. You've been sitting in the wrong seat. You won't say nothing because you want to smile. You want to praise. You want to sing. You want to serve, but you just need to be, we, me and Pastor Sierra see this every year. People say they want to do this. People say they are ready. People say they are committed. And we let them sit in that seat, but we didn't tell them what seat to sit in. 
you chose this seat. You said this was what you're called to do. You said you've been called here. You said we did not put no words in your mouth. Well, they gonna get mad. Oh well, they were sitting in the wrong seat. Just say you misheard the devil for God and stop acting foolish. Just say you. Just say you. Just say you was in your feelings, you was in your emotions, and you made a move based on how you felt. Service was good that day. You felt good about it, and you just came on in because we were friends, because you were invited. But I want to tell you, God is not going to have you sit in every seat. He will not do it. Do not lead. Do not do life like this. Your seats are supposed to be up not laid across the room like this. If you walked in your home to Satuana and your couches were on its back, something's wrong. <laughs> something is wrong. I don't, want, I don't want my seats to be out of order and I don't want my people to be out of order either. Come on, say amen. This is your family. Your family is a state. If you got your seat right, your family will be right. If you got your mind right, you'll make your mind up on the seat you're supposed to be sitting in. Come on, somebody say amen. Let us stand. We're going we're gonna to finish up. It is teaching on how to hunger and thirst for what comes out of us when we take the gospel. See, the Beatitudes, and I'm going to teach on this on, on Tuesday night, is where Matthew verse uh, 5 and 6 came from. Blessed are those that are hungry for um, hunger and thirsty for righteousness. Those are part of the Beatitudes. I'm going to teach on those on, on Tuesday night as well because that's important for us to be able to eat right. Do you eat your salad with a knife or with a fork? I'm asking y'all. All y'all weirdos eating with knives? <laughs> How do you eat your salad, with a knife or with a fork? How do you eat your cereal, with a fork or with a spoon? Exactly. There are right ways to eat, and there are wrong ways to do it. You can be unique and all that. You want to call it different? There are right reasons for right tools for right situations. You could take a hammer and try to put a screw in the wall and cause more damage to the wall. Or you could take a hammer and try to put a nail through the wall and do it smoothly. That makes sense to anybody? There are right ways to do right things. There are wrong ways to do right things and also cause bad results. Amen? So the Beatitudes teach us about our character and the inner, man, inner mind and heart in our, of our conduct. It's teaching us how to hunger and thirst for what comes out of us when we take the gospel in. It is the heart of God that desires us to occupy our seat in the kingdom. It's God's heart for us that we occupy the seat that he's called for us. I, I want you to envision if you have been sitting in seats that are not right. I can tell you there's several testimonies. Sister Cherise could tell you about sitting in the wrong seat. Pastor Sierra and I could tell you about sitting in a wrong seat. Sister Katrina could tell you about sitting in a wrong seat. You know when it's not right. You, I sell chairs. People come in all the time. You have chairs? Yeah, I have hundreds of chairs. I want you to sit in one and you let me know if this is the right one for you because I can't choose your seat. I don't have to sit in that thing for eight hours. I don't have to get up and worry about what happens when I get up and get out of that seat. That's your job. I sit in the seat, Pastor Sierra and I, come on, Pastor Sierra, come up here. We sit in the seat in this house. It's called pastoral. That's the seat we sit in. We sit in the pastoral seat. We have somebody that sits in the seat of a deacon. We have someone that sits in a seat as an administrator. We have someone that sits in a seat as a sound person, as a drummer, as a musician. We have those seats. They are filled. We're trying to figure out what the rest of these seats say. Who's going to sit in the other seats that are needed in the ministry? Kids' church, right? Everybody's saying, we need kids' church. We need somebody to facilitate what? Kids' church. It don't just happen because we think of it. It has to be also sat in that seat. You have to sit in that seat and want to sit in that seat and also produce in that seat. Amen. There's a seat, only one in this nation called the president. Only one person sits in that seat every four years. One. Not even a vice president can sit in that seat of a president. When uh, President Biden went under amnesia for his medical clearance, uh, they issued the power to uh, the vice president for temporary use until he came out of anesthesia. Any decisions that needed to be made in that hour window were made by her. And when he woke up, guess what? The power was restored back to him 
and she was back to where she was. There are seats that you sit in, you got to know the time, you got to know the hour, you got to also know the authority and don't take advantage of it. It would be foolish for that woman that had started a war while he was asleep, right? It's the same thing. It would be foolish for you to sit in the seat if the pastors don't make it to church and you're in charge to tear up the church because they ain't here or to not show up because they're not here. See, that's the old school mind. Oh, they're not here. Who preaching? That, that stuff, is that got to go. Who's preaching today? It don't matter. The gospel's being preached. If Deke preach, if Sister Wanda preach, if Sister Katrina preach, if Peaches preach, if Amy preach one day, as long as the gospel is being preached, somebody say it's all right. All right. In my, in my closing here, don't stay right here, Pastor Sierra. Don't be trying to ease up. In my closing here, back in the day, Vet, we used to sing this song in the church. I'm not going to sing it, but it used to say, um, that's all right. As long as I know I have a seat in the kingdom, that's all right. I know you have gone through, lift your hands. I know you have gone through some troubles and some pains. But as long as you know where your seat is, somebody say, that's all right. I know you've been going through some heartache and some abuse. They have talked about you. They have put you down. But as long as you know you have a seat in the kingdom, somebody say, that's all right. As long as you know where your seat is and how to get to your seat, somebody say, that's all right. The journey may be tough, but learn how to get to your seat and take your seat because God is going to feed you at that seat. God is going to nourish you at that seat. God is going to lift you up at that seat. God is going to restore you in your seat. All your purpose is going to come from that seat. Come on, somebody say, don't sit in the wrong place. Lift your hands. Let us pray. Father, I pray right now. God, that even if we've identified through this message today that we have been placed in the wrong place, God, that we have been occupying a seat for too long that was not ours, God, reveal it to us. Let us see how to manage to get up peacefully and find our way to the seat that you've called us to. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that this church, that this entire house has its seat right, Father. Let us be set in the place that you have called for us to operate and to prosper. Let us be able to, God, to show people how to identify where they are to be set, God, where they are to be used, God, where they are to be reduced, uh, producing, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, we pray right now that they identify the seats that are in their homes. Let the children identify the seat of a child. Let the husband identify the seat of a husband and a leader and a protector and a provider. Let the woman understand the seat of a wife and a mother and a nourisher and a caretaker, God. Let them understand the priority of their seats and do not fight about them. Let them not pick up their chairs and fight with them, God, but let them sit in their chairs, Father, in the way that you called them to. God, I pray that this house becomes a staple of seat takers, Father, in the name of Jesus, who are able to take their seat and, and oh God, and not move from where they are set. Father, we know that the reason of the Holy Spirit is because the men, the disciples, all went to that room and sat all with one accord. Let us finally stop make, playing musical chairs with our lives and sit in the seat you have called us to, God. Let us stop taking chance by chance by chance. Let us take on the destiny of our life. Father, we ask that you reveal this to us in our eyes, in our faith, in our lives, in our ears, in our hearts. Let us be content with your will and not be so eager to step out into this world. Let us not lose our lives because we were impatient. Let us not lower our standards because we want to fit in. Let us be righteous people. Let us stand strong in your word. And for that, we give you the glory. For that, we give you the honor. And for that, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. With everything inside of us, we say.